Hello again and welcome to Totem English Finland Part 5. I've been thinking for a while now that it would be a very good idea to take these words that are very difficult to translate from Finnish to English and try to translate them for you. And I don't know how well I succeeded, so I would love to hear your comments and I would love to hear your suggestions. And if you have any, please leave them in the comments below and I will try to address them. And why don't we just get right into it. Let's get started. Murtehäpi is a great Finnish word, which we don't have a translation for in English, but we should because it's a great word. So like all of these words, you just have to find some long way around it, unfortunately. So the way I would translate Murtehäpi is I was embarrassed for him or for her. So look at this sentence here in Finnish and try to think how you would translate it. So the way I would translate it is I was embarrassed for my friend when he behaved so badly. Also, I think another way you could translate this, or the way we might say this in English is I cringed at the way he was behaving. So to cringe is a great word. It sort of means to do like, uh, so when you see somebody do something horrible, you sort of do that and that's called cringing in English. Sisukas is the classic Finnish word, and it's hard to translate this into English because it's hard to get the nuance of what it means in Finnish. So take a look at this sentence here, hen on sisukas. So you could translate this as he is gutsy, and it's close, but it doesn't get it exactly, I think. You could translate it as he is gritty, and it's the same thing. It's close, but it's just not capturing the, the meaning which it has in Finnish. The way I would translate sisukas is I would change it a little bit and say he has guts and determination. So I think you would translate sisu as guts and determination. It's the closest we can get in English, I think. Vahingon ilo is a great Finnish word, which surprisingly we don't have a good translation for in English. And I don't know why. It's not like Americans and English people don't feel this very common emotion. We're not so noble, but... It's just a fact we don't have a word for it. So what we did is we borrowed the German word. So we say schadenfreude. It's not a very common word. Not many people know it, but it is used and we do say it. So if you look at this sentence here in Finnish, you could translate that as schadenfreude is the best joy. It doesn't sound nearly as good in English as it does in Finnish, uh, but it's the best we have. So also, you could translate schadenfreude as joy at other people's misery, but it's a very long and awkward way to say it, but it's descriptive of what it is. So that's the best we can do. So with the three words before talko that we sort of struggled with, we were able to come up with translation. It wasn't direct, but we got there. But I don't think this is the case for Talakot. I think there's just no good way to translate it. I've asked everybody and nobody has given me a satisfactory answer. So if you have a satisfactory answer or you think you might, please write it in the comments below. If you look in Google Translate, they use the word be, but this is very old fashioned and it's nobody ever actually uses it. So I think of Amish people raising a barn or a knitting circle or a spelling bee. So it's just not that common. So I think the best way to do this is to take a Finnish sentence where Talkot is commonly used and translated into English. So here's the finished sentence. And think about how to translate it. Okay, so the way I would translate this, and I admit it's very, very awkward, is we had our apartment blocks yard work day during the weekend. I know, right? It's it's totally awkward, but I can't think of anything better. And as I said, there's different types of talkot where you'd have to say it differently, so it's tough. I absolutely love this word. This is the winner. This is the best Finnish word. I think all non-Finnish speakers would agree that this word is absolutely fantastic. You Finns should be proud that you have a word like this. I almost want to do it. I've never done it. Thank God. I almost want to do it just so I can use it in a sentence. It's such a great word. And if 
Talcote was difficult to translate. This is almost impossible. I don't really even understand the nuance of it, but let's give it a try. So here's the finished sentence and think about how you would translate it. And I'll give you my extremely awkward translation and hope that you give me a better one in the comments below. Okay, so here is my translation. You ready? He stayed at home and got drunk with only his underwear on. That's it. That's that's how I translate it. And again, I welcome suggestions with that. Okay, that's it. I hope you found the video as interesting as I found it. And if you liked it, please click on the thumbs up below and please consider subscribing to my channel. The more subscribers, the better. And again, for about the 10th time, I would love to hear your suggestions and feedback and all that because these can be translated in so many different ways. And if you've watched my other videos, you know that I have a course called 50 Common English Mistakes Made by Finns on a site called Udemy. And if you click on the link in the box below, you will get a 50% discount on the course. So it will cost 10 euros. And also I have a Twitter feed, so you can find that below as well. So thanks for watching and see you next time.